Hey Michelle, welcome back. Today is another Seven on Sundays video. All the information to Grace's channel and the Goodreads group will be listed in the description box below. So you can check that out. Today's prompt is bookish pet peeves. And I thought that because we are focusing on romance this month, we will stick to romantic thing themes in books that are really just drive me crazy. <laughs> The first one are when there's like groups of characters and they all have to couple up. Like in the Shadowhunter series, like everyone has to have a boyfriend or girlfriend um, and also Six of Crows. Why can't you just be single? Like some of the relationships either like don't make sense or they feel really forced. The other ones that were like were an afterthought weren't, aren't always like the best developed. The second one is probably gonna be on everyone's list and that is insta-love. There is nothing about insta-love that is done well. Actually, I gotta take that back. I'm trying to think of a case where I feel like there was, there's sometimes there are cases that it's kind of on the verge of insta-love. I guess you could say that the Bella and Twilight thing were kind of an insta-love thing, but I feel like it was done well. But I could just be biased too, because it is like my favorite series. There's, a, there's another book where I feel like particularly it stood out to me and I was like, wow, I can't believe that this is like insta love, but like it makes sense. I can't think of one. I know there's one out there, but for as a general rule, insta love is a big no, no, because we don't get a chance to understand why they would care for each other. So it has to be like something that has justification as to why they kind of are attracted to each other or something like that, you know? The third one is when the entire purpose of the story is for the relationship. I see this a lot in contemporary romances. Um, I came up with this list looking at some of the books that I chose for the past couple weeks. <laughs> If you couldn't tell. This one, I'm particularly thinking of a book called Well Met. But this isn't the first time I've run into that. And when this kind of development pops up, I'm just immediately like not interested anymore. In the book Well Met, the main character... So it's supposed to take place during a Renaissance festival. And so the, our main character takes her niece, I believe, to a Renaissance festival and she feels completely out of her element and she gets there and it seems like the first thing she's doing is scouting for the first available guy to which she meets in the first couple of pages and you can already tell he is the love interest and so therefore everything that drew me to the book for instance being at a renaissance festival is kind of on the back burner and everything is just about these two getting together yeah, so I just really don't like when that happens. I think that a lot of fantasy has romance in it, which I really like, and they can be very strong and they can be very prevalent throughout the story, but the plot of the story is what's driving the story versus these people and their relationship. The fourth one is tropes such as like enemies to lovers or hate to love romances. I just always feel like they're never believable because I feel like when the switch occurs from like they start out the book when they are enemies and then something happens and all of a sudden they are starting to have feelings for each other. And I feel like the evidence to change their minds and their belief system is never very strong or compelling enough to make it believable. And one example where it's done well though is the the OG enemies to lovers, Romeo and Juliet. And they were not directly enemies. They were they grew up in families and the families were a constant war. And they were a little bit more removed from being direct enemies. So then it turns into more of a forbidden love instead of an enemies to lovers. And I really like that. So that's an example where it's like done well, I think. But for, I'm trying to think, for example, okay, the worst example, I mean, it's just a wretched book anyways. Kingdom of the Wicked was like the worst example. So we have a witch who completely 
hates this demon. Like every time she's around him, it's just like the disgust and disdain is so prevalent. And then all of a sudden she's like got the hots for him. Um, that was very bad. And it's kind of like enemies to lust lovers maybe i don't know like they could still be enemies and i guess still be lusty for each other but the thing is is okay he throughout like 200 pages through he didn't do anything like evil and so it quit being believable in that sense of why he's so bad so there was that whole thing but that was just a wretched book to begin with um and i wish i had more examples I know that this is a beloved trope though, so I am on the hunt for books with enemies to lovers or like hate to love romance where it like makes sense or what like where it's done really well. So I am I am still in the market to find some good ones. The fifth one is self-sacrifice to prove your love. Uh, I've definitely talked about this one before and it's just, in my opinion, I think it's always just kind of done not very well even when you love somebody there is some sort of self-preservation that when these authors write these characters that just completely goes out the window i think it was hush i think it was a building in hush hush and i think that was my first example of in hush hush i do feel like that was one of those ones where the relationship wasn't even well developed. It was complete insta love. I had no idea why these two liked each other. Patch never talked. And she's ready to jump off the top of a building for and die for him. And I was like, wow. The other example of this is in Twilight. We kind of have two examples of self sacrifice where Edward would die for Bella, but it made sense because he had already lived a long life he has this whole idea of like he shouldn't even be alive to begin with and this poor innocent girl who has her whole life ahead of her she could be destroyed for his sake and so there's so much writing on his existence and he loves her so much and he's not really afraid of death because he's lived so long and it makes so much sense in that respect and i could get on board with that on the other hand, Bella would also die for Edward. However, I think it's a little bit weaker. But it's not just for Edward and her love for him. It's also for her mom. Because the point where she just marches into face death in the face, uh, she is she, she knows that it's like a slim chance that they will let her mom go, but she's like, if there's any chance at all, I have to try and take it because like this isn't fair what's happening. And you know, I think that the motives are a little bit weaker, but I still like it. So, but as a general rule, I really don't believe in self-sacrifice for love to prove that you love somebody so much. Um, I just think it really doesn't need to happen. There's other ways around it, so whatever. Okay, number six is, okay, I hate when <laughs> the sexy bad boy is the love interest for the sake of being the hottest guy or the edgiest guy in the room, and we know nothing about him, but we know he's the love interest. I hate when they set that up. It's so, it's cliche. It's actually really cliche, and it's always like the bad boy Actually, this kind of goes directly into number seven when the bad boy and like the good girl get together. It's so breakfast club, but I actually know I kind of love that. I do kind of love that. But we have to know something about him. It's done well if you know, then maybe he's like troubled and misunderstood and broody and like that's cool. But when he's just the hottest guy in the room and we don't know anything else about him and it's not expanded on, that's when it's bad. I felt like Shadow and Bone was a little bit like this with the Darkling. And there we also kind of have something a little bit on the cliche side because we have dark and because he plays with shadows means that he always wears black <laughs> and he's the, the bad guy and she's a saint and she uses sunlight and you know it's okay um 
I don't get me wrong. This is like one of my absolute favorites, but it's not lost on me. The, the symbolism there and all that stuff, but he's the bad boy. And when I first I mentioned this before, but when I first read this book, I was like, oh wow, I really like him. And, and it felt like there was a lot going on. And then when I reread it last year, I was like, why did I think there was like all these instances, there was this slow burn between Elena, Alina and the Darkling because in actuality, there was only two events where he was even present and she like clung to him and like fell in love with him. That was a thing and I didn't like it very much. I don't like that setup and that, that, that story structure very much, I guess. Um, okay, and the last one is cliches, as I said. And I actually really had to think hard for this one. I mean, sometimes I'm like going along and I'm like, wow, I really hate when it happens. But then like when it's asked of me to come up with a, a list or items, I can't think of them. So that's where I was. I got stuck. I know there's more out there, but I got stuck. And this one popped up because I was literally just talking about a book that I DNF'd earlier this year called The Raven and the Dove. The biggest thing I hated about that book was the fact that there were so many cliches like the whole thing was just, it was too, too cliche. You know, we have the bad boys that are ravens and the good girl who's a princess, who's royal, who's the dove. Oh, and there was just a lot of, there was a lot wrong with that book, but because I was so irritated with everything else, the cliches just like popped out even more so. I probably, if I liked the characters and they weren't so damned annoying and everything on their mind was, ooh, boys, then maybe I could have looked past the cliches, but because the rest of the book was just awful, I couldn't look past it. There was that. But I don't like when things, oh, I know a good one. I don't like when things are too convenient. All right, well, that wraps this up. Let me know what your pet peeves are or if you agree or disagree with anything that I've said. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.